listen, man, had to start off with my guy. Well, not my guy. Yeah, he's my guy. Had to start off with my guy, Donny, man. Shout out to my guy, Donny, for the wild form brews. For some reason, like, it's dangerous now. I've got that noise stuck in my head and I'm finding myself now just going around my, around my, around my flat randomly going... Rah! I just think it's funny, man. Shout out to my guy, Donny. So I've just had to put that in the intro. But before I comprehend or before I continue with the podcast to, for this episode, I want you to pause it, stop it right now. And I want you to go back to your platform that you're watching, whether it's iTunes on Apple or whatever, and give me a five-star review and review it because there's not enough reviews. I was getting a lot of good comments from people DMing me, but not enough reviews on the actual podcast platform itself. So I'm going to stop it right now and you're going to... Um, yeah, you're going to review it right now. So do that right now, please. And I'm going to comprehend soon. again but you'll probably be glad to know i didn't do a freestyle over the beat this time over the instrumental reason being because i tried to play it on my laptop while i was gonna you know think of some bars to spit but the laptop the, the sound of my laptop wasn't corresponding and you know i've got an ongoing issue with it for some reason it either is working fine or it freezes where it's on the highest or freezes where it's just not coming low and even if i turn it up it just randomly goes back down to the beginning so anyway that's why i didn't spit any bars in it but you know bars might come to the next time on to the next time and thank you for going back and reviewing the podcast it's much much appreciated you know as i always like to say the i can't see itself meaning that sometimes it's difficult for you to realize or to reflect on or to give feedback to yourself sometimes it's better for you know people to do it for you you know hence why am i saying that i can't see itself i think it's my saying i can't remember anyone else coming up with it or getting it from anywhere else so yeah and also You'll be pleased to know that I am now going to speak much, much slower on the podcast. And also, I'm not necessarily going to try and do it all in one take. Because the reason I did it before all in one take... In fact, this might all be in one take as well. But the reason I tried to do the other one all in one take is because I didn't know how I'll be using the Audacity um, editing software. But after I finished recording the podcast last month and going on to Audacity editing, I realised it is quite simple. It's not easy, but it's quite simple. So I might not necessarily do it all in one take but you know i'm always able, aiming to do it in one take i'm a one take wonder in fact i don't even know if that's a good thing to say and yeah i'm not gonna burp or i'm not gonna clear my throat on the podcast i've got my water with me i can now um just you know just clear the throat if i need to but anyway let's get straight into it let me talk to you about my january 2020 so of course now it's a brand new decade i'm doing my hands i wish you could do my hands how i'm emphasizing my point but it's a brand new decade 2020 you know, it's just time to get him and it's time to crack on. And January for me, I'm going to tell you all about it. But February 1st, when January ended, for me, blew my mind. Now, of course, in the UK, depending on where you listen to this in the world, in the UK, uh, Brexit took place on the 1st of February. Now, I'm not going to go into any politics here or give my opinions on Brexit. But what I am going to give my opinion on is the fact that when I woke up on February 1st and I saw some of the justifications given to people at Westminster or the guy who I have in mind, he was in Kidderminster, I think. Maybe it's the issue with the ministers. I don't know. But And is it Westminster or Westminster? I never can know. And I'm supposed to be a Londoner. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it just blew my mind some of the justifications people had for voting for Brexit. Again, I'm not trying to knock anyone for doing, but it's just the justification for it. Like, they were not coherent. They were not articulate. They just was... It's like, it's like, bruh. You know that, you know that noise when people go, bruh? It's like, are you for real? And it made me realise that the reason I'm getting to this point now is that I think if you have people in their big adult age not able to comprehend or articulate who they voted for, then I think we have to lower the voting age to at least 17, man, or if not 16. 
Now, I put on my Instagram the same thing I'm talking about right now. And I said, yeah, we need to load up voting age of 16. And one of my followers shouts out to him. I can't remember his name. In fact, let me see if I can find it. Actually, no, I can't because I'm recording on my phones. But he said, no, he said to me, Cod, don't lower it straight to 16. Lower it to 17 first and then lower it to 16. I said, you know, I get your point. Make it progressive. So I feel that. And I, I like the way he's, <laughs> it's like I can have control. Like I can say, <laughs> it's like I'm going to make it happen. But yeah, I just, that just completely blew my mind, man. And it's just a damn shame that people don't lower the voting age. I'm not trying to say that Brexit should or shouldn't have happened. I just feel that if there are some adults in the in the UK who are <sighs> I mean, I, 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 the term I used at the time was Neanderthal, and then I got some, <laughs> I got knocked for describing people as a Neanderthal, but I just thought it'd be funny, but obviously it wasn't. But I just think it's a damn shame that we have certain adults in the UK who are eligible to vote, who might not be as smart or intelligent as certain 16-year-olds who can't vote. And you have to remember, that these 16-year-olds can get a job, etc., you know, but they don't have a right to say you can vote. That's a damn shame. But anyway, let me just move on to tell you guys what I was up to in January. And... First things first, I'm the realist, <laughs> no, I'm joking, but first things first, gym, let me talk to you about gym because going into 2020, I said to myself, gym is one of the things I'm going to sacrifice or not go to as much, reason being because I'm a kid whereby I used to train, like 2019 was really my most consistent year of training, I'm talking about training twice a day, morning doing my calisthenics and my evening going to the gym. But the reason why I'm gonna reason why I decided in January to cut down in gym is because each time I go to gym, that's two hours out of my day. And the way I kind of work and operate, I have momentum in what I'm doing. So for me to stop what I'm doing, go to gym and come back, it really just throws me off. And it's not a priority as such for me anymore. I, this month, I, well, last month, I should say, sorry, I only went gym twice a month. Not twice a month, twice a week, sorry. So I only did go twice a week rather than seven days a week. So that hopefully allowed me to free up a bit more time to do what i got to do. So in your own life, you've got to realise that, right, you know, where can you sacrifice something for something? You know, gym for me wasn't a priority as such. I thought, you know what, it's not like I'm going on Love Island or whatever. In fact, we're going to get onto Love Island later. So I thought, you know, let me just cut back on gym a bit. I'm going twice a week at the minute. Um, and yeah, man, seeing how that goes... And talking about seeing, yes, I am semi seeing someone ish. I'm semi seeing someone ish, so that's been kind of kind of good. Um, yeah, if you know me, I don't really see people. Do you know what I mean? But I'm actually semi seeing someone. So if any girls listening, <laughs> the thing is, I'm gonna say if any girls listening, I'm sorry. But then again, certain girls don't even care. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But we're not exclusive but it's, it's for me it is it is nice again to be semi seeing someone because i'm the type of kid where but i don't really do that do you get what i mean and this month also in february or in january i should say i also ended up going to the physio again for a checkup because yeah i think it's my adductor muscle so you know the muscle kind of by your hip bone for me that got frazzled when i was like doing our flex when i was 16 it hasn't been the same since so um yeah, I've had to go to the physio there, got some more exercises and I'll go back to them in February to see what I'll go in with it. And this January, I also ended up going to a Nantwich Vegan Fair, which is good. So shout out to the guy who's arranged a Nantwich Vegan Fair. That was all sick. Um, you know, those of you who know that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a vegan, I'm a very unapologetic vegan sometimes as well. And... That was good for me to go down and support the cause. Even though I did get there. You know when the event says, yeah, you got it's 10 to 4. I thought if I roll up around 3, that will be cool. Got there like 3. There's barely, there barely anything left. You know what I mean? I think I had one burger, which is nice. Had some Irish moss, again, which is nice. And I had some chocolate fudge. So that was cool. And um, yeah, then afterwards I had a meal with some people from my old uni at a Thai restaurant kind of near to where it was. And it's mad because at this meeting, at this meal, sorry, I'm going to touch on this later on in the podcast. I had an opportunity given to me that was mad. Do you know what I mean? That was mad. And I'm going to touch on that shortly. So shouts out to um, Kim. It's mad because I've everyone in the whole dinner in a restaurant. It's like 20 of us. I happen to be seen opposite Kim. <laughs> and it's, you know what it is? Kim won me over because I swear, like, Kim's got the same name as my cat. Like, I call my cat Kim. And I was totally tempted to say, say to Kim at the dinner, hey, Kimmy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's what I say to my cat. Hey, Kimmy. But, um, yeah, Kim won me over just by her name. Do you know what I mean? So when we proceeded to having a meal and she gave me the software on the table, I was like, oh, interesting. So I kind of, literally, because of Kim's name, she kind of swayed me in that sense. And that's the thing. When it comes to the psychology of persuasion, like, read the book by Robert Cialdini. Now, I've got, I've got both of them my bookshelf i easily put them in my top 10 books ever read but when you 
look at the psychology of persuasion, like the more you have in common with the person your antecedent or the person you're speaking with, the more likely you are to persuade them to do the thing you want them to do. Now, I'm not trying to say it's unethical, but it's just natural how we're susceptible as human beings to the psychology of persuasion so for example her name was kim i've got a cat called kim who i'm devoted to so as soon as i saw her and her name's kim i automatically start to like her because her name's kim so i hope that kind of makes sense and power oh my god power has been back in january listen if you know me i'm a huge fan of power like i only started watching power literally after the apprentice in december 2018 and yeah, man, Power hasn't disappointed, man. We're going to find out who Clip goes, hopefully, in February. But Power is an absolute mad thing. Power's mad. So, yeah. So, that's kind of what I've been up to, aside from business and aside from um, money-making activities, I should say. So, that's just what I've kind of been up to on a, on a leisure kind of thing, you know. So, that's kind of what I've been up to. Okay, so as you noticed, I paused <laughs> because now I know how to edit. So instead of me having a sip of my water on air, I just did it sideways. But anyway, now, what did you, do you guys know that loyalty can sometimes be a good thing as well as your worst enemy? For example, loyalty can be good to your, your spouse <laughs> in some cases. Loyalty can be good to your friends and family. However, loyalty can be dangerous to you when it comes to things such as car insurance. If you save your same car insurance provider year in, year out without looking around, you might not be on the best deal. And it's also, loyalty isn't a good thing when it comes to your banks as well. Now, if you're anything like me, this is the first time I did it, but if you're anything like me, you get your same bank that your parents gave to you when you were a kid and you stay with them throughout your whole life. Why? Because this month in January, for the first time, I actually took advantage of a, a bank switch offer. You know, they paid, you know, a, a sum, they, they paid me a sum of money to simply switch banks to them. And it just made me realise that, right, loyalty can be very expensive. Why don't more people switch banks? So have a look, have a look at your current provider. So in terms of like income for me in, in January, that's one little hack whereby it didn't take a lot. But certain bank providers will literally give you up to three figures for just by switching banks. Now, for me, I probably have a bank account with every bank on the high street, and as well as some of the ones online now. And so I literally now have a bank account whereby I'm literally using it as my bank switcher. You know, if any time there's a better deal, just switch it and get the money. It's just free money. So that's one thing I definitely recommend for people to do. And so let me talk to you about some of the achievements, some of the things that did go well for me in January as before I go into some things that didn't. But the first thing I'm really proud about for my January is creating this podcast here. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth as to why I'm proud of it. Go back and watch my first episode and you'll understand why. I've also created a blog now. So alongside this podcast, what you're hearing, this is now going to be my long-term audio content that I'm going to try and play around with for 2020. So far, I said to myself that, right, I'm, I'm at the very bare minimum, I'm going to do an episode at the beginning of each month, you know, review my previous month. So, and hopefully in between, in during the months, I might have a bit of time where I can do different kind of episodes. But at the very bare minimum, what I'm trying to do is just these kind of reviews. So I'm at least putting something out. Because I know there's a lot of gurus out there who advocate, man, you got to be putting out content, content, content. Obviously, you know, I'm referring to an American guru. But when you're, a, when, you're, when you're cracking on, when you don't have a big team around you, you can't prioritize putting out content as much as sales. Like in business, like especially if you're a free, I, in fact, I don't even like the term freelancer. Like I don't even, don't call yourself, a, you're not a freelancer, you're a paid lancer. People pay you, don't have free in your name. Do you know what I mean? Don't have free in your name. Unless your last name's Freeman. Do you know what I mean? But you're not a freelancer, you're a paid lancer. So if you're, if you're, if you're like a paid lancer, or if you're a solo entrepreneur or whatever, it's very difficult to prioritize putting up content. Talk about sales, without sales, it, nothing matters. So that's why it's difficult for me sometimes to put out content, content, content. So at the very bare minimum, I'm trying to do a month review. Do you know what I mean? And even doing this episode right now is kind of hard for me because I'm like, man, I don't really want to be putting up content right now. I really just want to be cracking on. But you know what? I'm going to try it. So this is what I'm really pleased with. And in January, I also had a lot of good booking inquiries come through. I had some very, very good bookings. Because one thing I do find, I know that's kind of knocking the fact about content. But one thing I do find is that, in fact, I don't want to sound cheese, man. I'm a vegan. I don't want to sound too cheesy. Unless it's a, unless it's a vegan cheese. I don't mind sounding vegan cheesy. But I found that 
the fact that I was more cracking on in January and putting out content, I had a lot more inquiries come to me and they're completely unrelated. That's the thing. It's not like someone listened to my podcast and then were inquiring. No, it's, it's, I can't describe it. It's like, it's, and it always happens, for example, let's just say I'm going to do a speaking gig. Always, 99.9% of the time, you, you know, you've got to leave room for error. 99.9% of the time, when I'm driving back from a gig... I would have another inquiry come through. I can't describe it. The more you stay in the saddle, the more opportunities come to you. Like, I can't describe it. It's just weird. That's why I used to spit my bars and say, I'm always in a saddle, strapped, ready for battle, steady the cattle past the remote. I'm changing the channel. Or ignore the latter part of it. But the beginning bit, well, I'm always in a saddle, strapped, ready for battle because the more time you're in a saddle, strapped, ready for battle, it's weird. You just get a lot more things coming through to you. So, um, yeah, so hopefully this month now in February, I'll be able to close some of the inquiries that did come through and deliver on them and I've also been signed to a few more speaking agencies as well actually and it's mad because one of the speaking agencies they were cheeky I'm not going to name them but imagine yeah imagine I'm just I'm in the saddle yeah and I've had a, I've had a, um, a speaking booking come through they go Kai Cody da, da, da. I'm like yo you're not my agency I haven't signed to you it's a decent fee and so I thought to myself you know I'm going to entertain it and then at the end of the email I said look I'm not on your books. Why don't you sign me to your books? You know, you're, you're giving me this piece of work. Why don't you sign me to your books anyway? Never heard back from them. Then I just decided to Google myself on their website or search my, Google my name with their, uh, with their agency name. And I saw myself listed on their website. I was like, wait a minute. How long have I been on your website? You never told me that. I was like, I didn't agree to be put on your website. So I don't know whether they were representing me for years or months or whether they just literally put me on the books because that inquiry came through. I don't know, but it's weird. I was there anyway, but it wasn't the best. Like I did email back and say like, look, I appreciate you got me listed on your website, but come on, man. The, the, the picture you got me is grainy. Do you know what I mean? You can see my bald patch. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you see, you can see, see, see like a spot on my chin. Do you know what I mean? And, and the bio they give me isn't the best. They just dragged the bio from the apprentice. So, um, yeah, I emailed them. In fact, they still ain't even got back to, to me actually to say that, um, they've amended it. I might even Google it again after to see if they changed it. So that's nice. The fact that I'm, I've been signed to three new agencies, speaking agencies in January. That's one thing I had on my goals for 2020 to get more speaking agencies. I've been on one so far, so now I'm on four in total. Because the thing is, it's like the advantage of being in a speaking agency or agency period is that it's just another avenue for you to get work. Do you know what I mean? It's just another, because they've got a list of clients themselves. And um, so, yeah. And one thing I was really, really, really excited yesterday in terms of the beginning of February or in terms of the end of January, because I'm not too sure, is that I recently started to I recently started to do a lot more investing because it's weird. I'm finding myself I prefer doing I prefer generating income through investing than actively doing if that makes sense because investing your money works for you while you sleep you know it's not it's, it's a passive income and it's mad because i i um took out a new investment pot in december and it's weird because already in a month it's gone up by 25 percent and i remember thinking that like, yo this this is this is this is crazy because Usually in your bank, in your high street bank accounts, your interest rate is what, 1%, 2% or whatever, give or take. You know, if you're looking at um, cryptocurrencies, you know, I also dabble in crypto as well. You're looking at, um, or, or, unless it's a massive, um, I don't even know if, I can't remember if it's bear run or bull run, I can't remember the terminology. Unless it's a massive run, it's usually, you know, smaller increments, but it's mad because the investment fund, the investment pot I took out in December has already increased by 25%. And it's just, a part of me wants to take it out and just uh, take the winnings, but a part of me was like, no, I took out that pot specifically for um, long term. And when I say long term, I'm talking three plus, you know, five plus years. Because one thing I've been, been bad at is that I've been bad at looking long term. Because you know what it's like when you're at school, man? It's like, I, I remember when I was 15, I didn't even think I'd make it to 30. Do you know I mean? 30 seems far. But now it's like, you know when you sign forms at the doctors? I've come out of the category from 16 to 24. I'm in a category now 25 to 35. <laughs> I'm like, yo, when did you put me in the category of 35 year olds? So I can now see, <laughs> I can see 30 onwards. So it made me realize that, right, I really need to look more long term. So I took out um, 
that investment fund. And if anyone's got more questions about investing or whatever, I'm not an expert, but I I, I know ish. Do you know what I mean? Feel free to hit me up and we can have a conversation about that. So yeah, man, that's a an, another another win I had this month or last month, and another another win. I don't know if I like this format, you know, just going for my wins, but we'll, we'll go with it anyway and we'll run with it, we'll run with it. Give me your feedback again. Feedback helps me feed forward what I want to do next. So, yes, yeah, so another thing I had, uh, I went to go and see my media agency, so different, so not only have I been signed to now speaking agency, but I've also got media agencies now, which is, a uh, media agency now, which is great, and went down there to London. But it's mad because we had a casting, I wouldn't even call it a casting, but we basically, there's a load of us in the room, we had an opportunity to do a social media campaign for this new app. And it just made me realise that as people, we really gas ourselves up too much. Now we left that casting, I, don't, I wouldn't even call it a casting, we left a meeting when we got told about the social media campaign. And a lot of people from the from the meeting went on Instagram, yeah, just came back from a casting, da 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 I'm like, bitch, that... <laughs> Like, why are you gassing to your fans? We literally just got f- told some information about a campaign he wanted to do. That, I don't know, just find people gas it up too much. It's like that guy who says that, you know, what do you do for a job? Um, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a ceramics handler for a, for a multi-international million multi-pound firm and we've expanded globally. You're not, you're not a ceramics handler working in an international firm. You're, 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 you're working at McDonald's cleaning the dishes. Do you know what I mean? People just gas things up too much. <laughs> they curl it up too much. Now, I don't know if I'm being cynical or whatever, but I, I, didn't even, I wouldn't even put that out on my social media. So went to a casting, whatever, whatever. And then what made it even worse is that with my agency, again, they put out some... They gave everyone an opportunity, right, to um, get some tickets for um, London Fashion Week in, in February. I'm going to it anyway. And they said to, um, to email if you want a ticket. So, again, a lot of people on the agency that I'm with emailed the email... And and then they and then they got an auto response back. Listen, they got auto response back, right? S- saying you got a ticket. And they went on their social media and said, Oh my god, thank you so much. Thank you for like, giving me a ticket to, to London Fashion Week. Bitch, they gave everybody a ticket. Everybody who emailed got the same auto response back. And why are you gassing to your fans saying that you got it? Just made me realize that right, I am not. I don't want to be in, I just need to keep it real with people. I'm not going to, if I got auto response back giving me a ticket, I'm not going to gas on my social media and say, yeah, I got a ticket. Da, 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 da. Everybody got that. So again, man, just made me realise, am I being cynical now? And Am I turning into, you know, okay boomer? Am I turning into an okay boomer? Or I don't know, man. But I just made, it just made me laugh, man. But yeah, it was good. Um meeting up with my new talent agency now. You know, I've gotten very close to the owner, been working with her, getting sponsorship as well for London Fashion Week. So it's all been good, man. It has been has been really, really good. Now, going back to what I was saying about Kim. So me and Kim, <laughs> it felt like it was just me and Kim at this table, you know? And I don't mean my cat, I mean a person who I went to the chat. It wasn't just me and her, there's 20 other people. I didn't even know she was going. But um, yeah, so it was me, Kim at a dinner and we're just chatting. Now, I had an opportunity to run for councillor. Oh, Kylie was going to be councillor. But unfortunately, I decided not to run. Now, I don't want to say why, because I don't want to shoot myself in the foot if I do decide to run years down the line. But it's, again, it's just going back to my point. It's like, when you just stay in the saddle, a lot of things come to you. Like, what are the chances? Me sitting opposite Kim at a dinner of 20 people and then getting proposed an opportunity to run for councillor. It's just mad. But um, maybe in the future, maybe in the future. But yeah, I had an opportunity to run for councillor. I was so gassed. I, initially, I was going to do it. I was, I was literally, I was so gassed. I'm not going to imagine councillor Cod. I was calling myself councillor Cod, councillor Cod. But I decided to go against it, man. Decided to go against it. And it's funny because in that post I mentioned about Brexit earlier, when I put on my Instagram... I put up a throwback of me debating the referendum back in 2016. And there was one comment, someone said, you'll make a great politician. And it got hella likes. And I was thinking, man, if only you knew, I just turned down a position to run for councillor. But, and yeah, and I don't want to gas blow my own trumpet, but yeah, I would, I would have, we would have won. Like, I'm not, listen, when I'm about to go, and, listen, this no ramp for me. Like, I would, I would have shut it down. I would have shut it down. But I thought, you know what? Now's not the right time. But you know what? One of my biggest wins were for, for January is that I've got a new washing machine. If you remember from the last episode, right, you remember the, the drama, the drama I had with my washing machine, how it got scammed. So I bought a new washing machine and hopefully, it hasn't even come yet, but 
it will be coming soon. And then this made me, again made me realise that, COD, you could have bought that washing machine before even getting scammed. It just made me realise that sometimes, remember what I said to you, the cheapest thing is not always the cheapest thing. I saw the cheap washing machine thinking, yeah, it'll be great, it'll be sick. Turns out it was a scam. And you know what the funny thing is? It's still in my kitchen because I've got to wait for it to be collected. So every time I go to my kitchen, it's a permanent reminder of how I've got scammed for a washing machine. But anyway, I've got a new one coming tonight, so it's all good. It's all good. And another thing I've been working on, something I propose to do is I'm set up a new Instagram page. Kylie, why are you setting up an Instagram page? Good question. I don't know who said that, but good question. Because to be honest with you, it's not, it's not one for me. It's not, a, it's not a COD brand one. It's the Instagram page I'm looking to build. You know, you've got like the I'm just baits or the accidentally vegans. Now, these are literally things that start us as an as a, um, Instagram page was built. And they can generate a revenue stream from it. So I thought to myself, you know, I've got an idea for an Instagram page. Um, it hasn't been done before. It's not going to take me a lot of effort. Why not just give it a go? Why not just give it a go? It's like these little, sometimes these little small hustles. If you if you sow the seed from now, you don't know how well it's going to grow to. You don't know where it's going to grow to. So I sow the seed now for this new Instagram page. I set up a new Instagram page. Don't ask me where it is yet because I want to try and build it, build it first and then... Yeah, then I'm gonna let people know. So yeah, it's a great concept in my opinion anyway. So I'm gonna grow that, see how it goes. And hopefully, we never know when it, let's just say it gets 100K followers or whatever, we might come back to this episode and say, do you remember when Kylie spoke about um, building Instagram in February 2020? Well, so this is how I wanna document it. I don't necessarily always agree with documenting, but yeah, I'm gonna document it. Anyway, another thing that happened is that I finished a book I was telling you about last month, which was Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. And when I say this is one of my best top 10 books ever read, I mean, I just said, I said earlier about the Robert Cialdini ones were some of my best as well. But honestly, the Phil Knight, True Dog, that book's gold and inspired me that, you know, it's, he, it was his memoir about starting Nike and inspired me to realise that, you know, I want to I wanna write my own memoir. Do you know what I mean? We don't have to wait till we're older to write your memoir. You know, could, like, you know, yeah, yeah, you can wait till you're older, but you've got some experience in your life that people might take value from. So... Yeah, man, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but it's definitely inspired me. So, Phil Knight, Shoe Dog, great book. You know, shouts out to the guy who started Nike. And another pro for me in February, or January, I should say, sorry, was that I've now got three, three months on my mobile phone. So, I know I can't pronounce my THs, but free as in you don't pay for anything, and the free being a number free. Why? Just simply from referrals. Simply from referrals, which is mad because I now don't have to pay my phone bill until May 2020. Because I keep telling people that sometimes to get rich, it's not about how much you make, it's how much you don't unnecessarily spend. Now, if you're listening to this on a phone that's costing you £40 a month, £50 a month, £60 a month, I'll turn around and ask you why. Why are you paying that much for a phone? Do you know how much I pay for my phone? right now was zero right now but you know how much the cheaper tariff is that you can get with this with this company that i've been promoting it's 10 pound a month for 30 gig 10 pound a month that's it just 10 pound a month and it also gives you the opportunity to also promote it as i'm doing to get three months so i don't understand why people choose to pay 30 40 50 pounds 60 pound a month for what just because you want to save the latest latest iphone do me a favor I sound like my old math teacher, Mr. Joseph. He used to always, always be like, do me a favour. But for all, do me a favour. Like, you don't... I'm content not with having the Apple iPhone 11. Do you know what I mean? I'm content having a few versions behind. Because I'd rather have that money in my pocket. I'd rather put that money towards other things. So, honestly, look at your, look at your outgoings and realise, that right, where are you overpaying? If you're already in your contract and you're too far gone, fair enough. And when you're out of contract, really ask yourself, do you need to be paying that much a month? Or can you be going on to a SIM only deal? And... I did put up a post button and I got a lot of good reviews. So, um, yeah, really do consider that. Really, really do consider that. And and one of the last, second to last things, on, well, the promotement things I want to touch on is that I'm going to Jamaica in September, which is exciting. You know, booked on to go to Jamaica. I've been to a few Caribbean islands now and going to Jamaica in September. So that should be exciting. And I should have touched on this a bit earlier, but... One of another investment thing I touched I did is that yes I told you about the one before the investment port I did in December which grew by twenty five percent, but a few days ago I also invested on a new platform into a new startup, and I haven't I don't know return on that yet but 
Again, it's making me realise that I do like the investing aspect. I do like to invest in because it's your money working for you. It's not you working for the money. And so, yeah, again, we'll see how that investment goes. I don't, I don't want to say the company I invested in and I don't want to... Um, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if I don't know if you can actually. I don't know if we're allowed to yet. But yeah, so I recently put invested in another startup company. I wouldn't even say they're a startup because they've been going on for what six, six years. I mean, that, they could, you could still be a startup, but hopefully, see how that goes. Again, that's more of a long term investment. So that's one thing I've really been trying to do. So yeah, so that's kind of a wrap up of some of the things I've been up to for for January. So I hope you find that interesting. I hope you took some value from that or if you've got any feedback for me let me know and just let's just carry on and smash it for 2020 so yeah so now let me talk to you about some of the mistakes and lessons learned because it's not all rose gold like one thing i really hate about and it's not many things i hate but one thing i really hate about people who are putting content out there is the way they glamorize thing and make it like like everything's good but it's not do you know what i mean but it's not you know like some of the things that some of the mistakes that happened to me in january is just it's not cool you know what i mean one of them like, like i told you i started off the blog i thought i'll do that in one day but that literally knocked that literally took like seven days out of my week to do and now, and now i've got to think to myself was it worth it for them seven days to start a blog page which has got limited traffic for now but then i realized again it's long term i'm looking to build I'm, i want to go traveling at some point i'm talking about traveling whereby i stop everything in the uk book a one-way ticket and take it from there and i'll and i want to kind of use blogging income to go through that so even though it did take me a long time a lot longer than expected hopefully i do kind of reap rewards of that in the long term so if you want to check out the blog i set up it's called thecodblog.com so thecodblog.com so i've got a talk i've got now the podcast the cod blog so i'm trying to build a brand around cod and another thing that didn't work out for me this month is that i had another quick hustle idea that didn't go well, man. Didn't go well. Not to say it didn't go well. It's that I pull it to my market, which was on Instagram. And from the market research, they kind of shut it down, which is good. Because sometimes when you've got a, an idea for a business or a little side hustle, it's always good to pre-sell the idea first. It's always good to pre-sell the idea. For example, when there's a new housing um, foundation, when there's a new housing development being built, best believe they're selling the houses before the houses are already being built. So when the houses have been built, people can move into it straight away. So do you get that kind of concept of pre-selling? So it's the same thing for me now and the concept I have. And it's, and I do it with a lot of different, a lot of ventures, a, a, a lot of business things I've done, I pre-sell the concept first. So I pre-sell the concept, people weren't interested, which is cool, that means I don't have to put money behind it, so I kind of save money. So it's a loss, but I kind of save money in the long term. Because I could have set it up, got going with it, but and people not want it, but I kind of tested it to the market, people said they didn't want it, and that was it. And basically what I was going to do, I was going to use the platform Fiverr to provide a service for people on Instagram. Now, Fiverr's a website whereby you, it's literally, you can literally pay $5, which is like £3.77 pence for a service or something online. And now you got to ask yourself, what are you prepared to do for £3.77? It's not a lot of money, but what are you prepared to do for £3.77? And so I had a concept whereby it, it, it required not a lot of time. It's something I could pump out and do a lot in volume. So that's why I wanted to set that up. Even though it would have been a cheap service or £3.77 or whatever, it wouldn't have required a lot of effort. And I could have got a lot of, you know, getting a thousand £3.77 is a lot better than getting one 100, if that makes sense. But unfortunately, that concept didn't really work. And that's fine. But an L I took again in, in January, I got scammed again, when I got scammed in December and I got scammed in January. You know, I got scammed in January. In January. Basically, remember I mentioned that I was going to my agency, my talent agency, it's not my speaking agency, I was going to my media agency in London. Now, I left London in 2010 and so I guess I kind of got to blame myself for not being street smart. But basically, some homeless looking... Um, he was like Arabic looking or like from Middle East kind of looking, homeless look rough, was handing out tissues with a note saying, you know, I'm homeless, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm, I'm offering a small packet for some change. So I was thinking, yo, like I rated his initiative, you know, I gave him what, three pound? The girl opposite me, I thought was kind of cute. Um, she she um she said no, but I said no, don't worry, I pay for her too. So I gave him another pound. So I paid I paid four pounds for some tissues, thinking yeah, this is cool. Don't best believe I got off the tube, went in the other direction now, and I saw a girl doing the same hustle, and I was like, alright, cool, I've been scammed. I put it on my social media. So everyone's like, yeah, this is a thing in London. People are you know pretending, being homeless, putting out these fake notes and getting scammed. So that so that but that pack of tissues is the most expensive pack of tissues I've ever bought. Four pounds for a pack of tissue, you know. Mad thing. So yeah, I got scammed, man. But 
we live, we learn, we live again, I guess. And the final two things which weren't really good for me is that I ended up having a beef with an accountant, man. Ugh. Basically, this accountant uh, deceitfully <laughs> approached me <laughs> to work with me. And now, so I, we, um, it, was, it wasn't the issue that they deceitfully approached me, but we, we, we started working with each other, whatever, whatever. And they had the hump for me for asking for the help that they said they were helping me with. And in my head, I'm like, you're the one who approached me asking for the help, and now you got a hump for me? So, yeah, we kind of had a little, a little falling out, man. But hopefully, hopefully the bridge hasn't been burnt because it, hopefully we're still civil is what I'm trying to say, because even though you might not, getting with someone it's always best to keep the relationship not you know, i know the relationship might not be there but just leave it how it is because you may never know how things you might have to help each other in the future and that leads me on to another beef i had i had a beef this week with um a, a fellow professional speaker i put in one of our speaker groups on facebook about some help i had with a proposal i was offering and then he kind of I I, he doesn't know me i don't know him but he basically kind of mocked me in the comments now, if you've seen, listen, like, I, I'm, I'm a smiley dude, but please, one of the worst things you can do to me is A, try to diss me, or B, try to diss me publicly. Because in my head, I'm like, who the F do you think you're talking to? And I, I replied back, you know, like, mother... I didn't say that, but in my, in my head, yeah, I'm tired. Like, you know, in your, in your head, what you're thinking, where you're trying to do it, like, to whom this may concern, you know, when you're trying to make it professional with it, like, but well, yeah, we basically kind of went at it in the comments, and we both kind of deleted our comments afterwards. We realized it weren't the best, and it's like, look, you know, you didn't have to get at me and diss me in my comment. You know, I shouldn't have snapped back at it, but I just, it made me realize in my character, something I need to work on is that I'm not very good at taking public disses because. Usually in my head is who the f do you think you're talking to? But I'm, I since being young I am getting better at it because I know it's not the best thing to do. But something I'm working on, my man. Something I'm working on. But for this month now, February, there's a few things I've got in the pipeline, man. A few things I've got in the pipeline. Now, without going into it too too much, because I'm aware that this podcast. So, then, then again, no one really got on to me about the podcast being long last time, being um. 55 minutes this is going to be a lot shorter i'm kind of wrapping it up now anyway but february for me is going to be an exciting one hopefully not hopefully fingers crossed but it's going to be one whereby in fact let me not even say that it's just going to be it's just then again let me not let me again i told i spoke about gassing up the thing earlier people gassing it up you know there's they say there's a ceramics washer when they or they say they're, they're a ceramics handler when they're a dishwasher in mcdonald's let me not just get let me not guess it out february's february in it and you know hopefully february has some good thing. Let me not say it has. Let me not say it, I hope it has some good things in store because it. Again, let me not even say it will because right now I'm reading a book by um, I can't remember his name, but it's called what's it called now? It's called um, I can't even remember, man. What's it called? It's called ah, oh, I can't even remember. Let me well, bear me one second. Let me quickly check. Yes, that's it. It's called the subtle art of not giving a f word and yeah it's just kind of made me re- it's just kind of, it's been a, it's a really good book so far and it's kind of really making me realize that right how i kind of want to be operating as, as a human being in this galaxy so yeah so we leave it as that i have one thing again i messed up because i wanted to um, put a message on my social media to say if you had any questions you want me to answer on the podcast but i didn't do that i kind of just went straight into it but anyway that's all good but it's now coming up to a time whereby usually I'll be sitting down to watch Love Island, but I'm determined I'm not going to watch it. Because in January, I think I was watching a bit too much and I'm catching myself watching it whereby I don't worry you want to be watching like that. So I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to kind of edit it, do the audacity and literally just take it from there. So yes, that's it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Coyote Podcast podcast. Again, give me your feedback on what you thought. Give me a review as well. So this, again, this is just been a, a review kind of episode. Just a review one. Um, again, hopefully during a month, I might have a bit of time where I can do more content. But at a very bare minimum on a Coyote podcast, you're going to get the reviews from me of the previous month. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this of some value as well. Hope you stay good wherever you are listening to this. Thank you for listening and take care. I'll speak to you soon. Fuck me, you don't wanna fuck me. 
Men will die tonight. Like that. Million streams in a week. <laughs>